I'm slipping. I lost yes. my pencil now finding she's the pen. Oh, that's my right. So, we, there's kind of a natural progression with this stuff, with our earth science. So, we've started looking at how the um, surface of the earth changes, right, through weather and erosion and deposition. Now, we're going to take a look at going deeper. So, we're not just surface level. We're going to go into the layers, into the interior of the earth, right? So that's what this unit is all about. <coughs> Lost my point. There we go. All right. So scientists think that the Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago. So <coughs> fairly old. How did we get to thousand? Okay. So we didn't start counting back 4.6 billion years ago, right? Um, and there are different calendars, different. Um, Kind of measuring scales for time. Um, obviously, the one we're on is 2000, right? So you take it over Zach's spot by asking questions. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Um, all right. One thing that's going to help us kind of see um, what's going on, because obviously we can't just like start digging into the earth and see what's there. We're going to look at models. We're going to look at cross sections, right? and these cross sections can look different ways. And basically. A cross section is just going to be considered a piece of the earth or like a section. Brandon, I need you to close up your Chromebook for me. Thank you. All right, so it's just a piece of what we're looking at. So here's one example. If you think of like a piece of bread, if you take a slice of that bread, it's not the whole loaf, right? It's just like one sliver of it. We can do the same thing with our earth's interior. If you think of that slice, it'd be considered a cross section of that loaf of bread. So when the loaf is whole, you're just looking at the outside, like the surface, which is what this whole last unit was about, the surface of the earth. If you start looking at a cross section, you're looking at an, a piece of it, like an inside portion, typically. So a cross section might look like this, where they actually like just go in and take a chunk and pull it out. We can see from the inside to the outside, all those different layers. Um, doctors actually do this um, when somebody gets a biopsy done. So like if there's some kind of mole or a growth or some kind of tumor or something and they wanna see, okay, what kind of tissue, what kind of cells are involved in this, this growth or this tumor. Um, they can go in and they have like a little tool and they just go in and take a chunk and then they can examine that and, and see kind of what's going on. We also have it, this one always kind of reminds me like of an orange. Like it, you know how you take like a wedge out of an orange or an apple? Um, so like they just take this chunk and we're looking at what's left. We could also kind of turn it around and take the chunk and just look at what was left from the chunk. So you kind of look at it two different ways. So you could open it up like this or you could be looking at the piece that was kind of removed and seeing kind of what's involved. Lots of different ways and you'll see a bunch of examples throughout. Before I forget, in Google Classroom, you may have noticed um, that there are a ton of new links. So, a bunch of them. A bunch of um, diagrams where you can practice the layers. Um, and then just a bunch of the other kind of, there's some uh, seismic waves, there's some Earth's interior, and then obviously there's the vocab. So that's all there for you in Google Classroom. Um, so, ooh. Lots and lots and lots. And again, the easy wow. way, once we get some more posts, remember, if you go to Classwork, go to Unit Links, and then all of those links are here as well. So you can see in this, the Cahoots, the, the Bookets, all of them are there. So don't forget to practice those. Um, sometimes people struggle a little bit with the layers because there's some weird names, stenosphere, mesosphere, lithosphere. Sometimes people um, just need a little bit of extra outside practice. So I see you guys in homeroom. A lot of you are not having anything to do. So um, this is something that you could always practice and play in the game form, and you're getting practice. So here's another um, version of a cross section. This is always kind of like, I think of like the slice of pie. Um, and so kind of you get that little wedge or that slice there. Yum. I know. <laughs> you know everything always relates back to food for me. <clears throat> I apologize. Okay, so these layers are heterogeneously layered. In other words, they're kind of like stacked on top of each other, 
but they are, the layers are all very different. That prefix hetero means different, and we'll get to that more later this year. So you're going to have some blanks that you're filling in, all right? So you have like a little text box that's blank here, here, oh, here. Oh, I see. Yes. So you should see those. Um, now, I'll go through these so that you can see them. You should have um, the, the top one is lithosphere, and it's this gray and the crust above it, L-I-T-H-O-S-P-H-E-R-E. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a cheese. No, it looks oh, oh. <laughs> okay, like if you have like the wheel, like a cheese wheel thing, and you have, okay. 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 I've never thought of it like that, but I agree. I like cheese too. All right, and then you have a stenosphere, A S T H E N O. And then that sphere again, S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. And then, I know, and then we have mesosphere, M-E-S-O. And then our sphere again. So we have litho, asteno, and meso, all in front of sphere. Let's see, we have, um, we have the outer core, and then we have the inner core. Okay? Good? <laughs> so these layers are not equally sized. Um, the mesosphere um, is definitely going to be, and this, these three layers, the litho, the steno, and the mesosphere, the sphere layers are all part of what we call the mantle. Um, and then here we call the inner and the outer, those are our core. And then we have our crust, which can be oceanic or um, continental, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so a lot of times our models or our pictures are going to be a little bit inaccurate. They're going to make it look like, oh, it's like this perfect little line and I'm crossing into the inner core. Perfect little line and I'm crossing into the mesosphere. Obviously, it's not quite that perfect in real life. Um, and so sometimes like it, it's oversimplified just to help it be easier for us to kind of get a, an idea of what's going on. But understand, like it's not like, you know, a perfect line and you cross into the next layer. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So there's three major categories. We have crust, we have mantle, and we have core. So we're gonna start at the top with our crust, and there's two types. This is gonna be the outermost layer of the earth. It is definitely the thin thinniest, oh my, thinnest, <laughs> rockiest outer layer. Thinniest, making up things. All right, so if you have crust that is over ocean, so crust, and then there's ocean over it, it's called oceanic crust. If you have crust and there's no ocean over it, it's just like your continent, continental crust. So the crusts are kind of easy to keep straight. Oceanic or continental. Continental, like social study? Okay, and so... Typically, the oceanic crust is thinner and it's more dense because think about it, it has all that pressure of the water, the ocean, pressing down on it. So it's usually really dense, tightly packed. Um, so the oceanic crust is typically about four miles deep or thick, and that'd be like driving from here halfway to Galleon. That's about four miles. So if you get in your car, we drive halfway to Galleon, that would be like if we could dig straight down that's about how thick the crust would be underneath our ocean. Now, <clears throat> you can see that the continental crust is significantly thicker. Typically, it's about 25 miles deep. That would be like driving from here going to Marion. Crazy. That's a lot of crust. Okay, that's a lot of crust. Okay. So, obviously, the oceanic has an ocean over it. Continental has... The continent. You do not have to memorize like how how thick. Um, you're going to have to know some general characteristics of the layers. 
But those kind of things are something that you can always look up. I don't feel like there is a need to like burden your brain with random like data, like like numbers like that, because you can always look it up. Um, just as long as you kind of have a general understanding that oceanic usually is a little bit thinner and it's more dense because it has the, the pressure of the ocean pushing on it. Okay, so the oceanic crust is going to be the outermost layer that the ocean covers. So again, this would be oceanic crust here, about four miles thick. Now, it's typically made of igneous rock. What type of rock is igneous rock? Where does it come from or what? What is it related to, Sarah? Um, yes, it is related to uh, volcanic um, activity. And so next unit, um, we're going to start talking. Um, so what we learned this unit is definitely going to <coughs> make next unit a lot easier. So these connections. Um, we're going to talk about why this crust is volcanic, made of that volcanic material which is basalt and gabbro, for example. Oh. It's only about 180 million years old. That's really young compared to the age of the Earth, which is 4.6 billion. Like, that's just like a snap of a finger, right? And so we're going to talk about why that is. Um, so not to get too ahead of ourselves, but we will get to that. So that, that layer can be volcano? Well, here's the thing. It's not like it's going to be a volcano and erupt always. What's happening is there is... Um, that lava, which we call magma when it's beneath the surface, it's in this mantle area, and so it oozes up, and it makes that new crust. So that's why it's young. And again, we'll get to all this, um, and you'll be able to kind of put all of this together as we get to more. We can't like cover everything all at once. So just realize this is younger. It's usually made of this volcanic magma type rock that is cool. Sometimes it is, Shelby, though, made, like the Hawaiian Islands are made of the volcanic um, um, activity, and like, so there are actual volcanoes there. there. the water? Yes. But in general, we are sitting on magma. Our whole earth is like a ball of magma that's beneath our crust. That's yeah, spooky. Like really it really is kind of spooky. Continental crust is going to be the outer layer of the earth that the continents rest on. Again, it can go from 5 to 46 miles, but again, usually 25 miles is about average. And again, that'd be like going from here to Marion. And it's made of a lot of different types of rock. It's um, not just volcanic. And this type of rock is 4.6 billion years old. So it's not young like our oceanic crust is. It has good connection, Jackson. Good connection. Okay, <clears throat> the mantle. So there is a thin boundary, and you'll hear this in some of our videos. It's called the Moho Vera discontinuity. They shorten it to Moho boundary or Moho discontinuity. Um, it's kind of like a thin layer that separates the crust from the mantle, and we know that it's a little different because it's not crust and it's not quite mantle. It's chemically different than both of those, and so it's its own small little boundary. Um, and so I like to point that out because you will see it in a lot of pictures. And if I don't say it, then usually you're like, what is that? Like, why, why don't we talk about that? It's not a true layer. It's just kind of a, a separation. To me, it's like the sauce in a pizza. If you have your crust, that's one area. If you have your sauce, that would be like the moho boundary. And then you start your cheese and toppings. All right? So it's kind of like a thin barrier between the, the toppings and the crust. Mm -hmm in a pizza. So here we have our crust, here we have our mantle, and then here we have this thin kind of saucy layer that we call the mojo. Oh yeah, pizza. Okay, I know. Seafood again. Oh, I'm hungry. All right, so the mantle is by far going to be the largest of the layers. Um, if you look at this little um, cross section or diagram, you can't even see. The crust is just like a very thin, thin shell or line. The mantle is super, super thick. It's about 70 or 80% of the entire um, volume of our Earth. Oh, 82. Oh, that's interesting. It is. So it's about 1,800 miles thick. That'd be like driving from here to Las Vegas. Okay? 1,800 miles. So you go from the crust 
dig down all the way through the crust, all the way through the mantle, 1,800 miles. That's a lot. That's like that's pretty much all the way across our country, right? So but you're thinking going straight down. Yep. Okay. Let's start digging. So, <laughs> so it is made of what we call magma. Magma is lava. So what you picture in a volcano, that hot, gooey, you know, kind of liquidy, um, thick, boiling material, we call that magma when it's under the surface. Okay? It's the exact same thing. We don't call it lava until it reaches the surface, but it's the same thing. And we'll look at some videos and things that show this really well. He gives us some good visual images. So as the earth formed, it was a molten ball, molten meaning like melted, liquidy, hot, boiling, it started to cool. And that happened about four billion years ago. And it caused the outside of the planet to harden into our crust. That is so cool. So if you ever made brownies, the batter, brownies. it reminds me of the magma. And then when you bake the brownie, right, and you take it out. I don't know why brownies do this, and I just made brownies a couple weeks ago because we were talking about them in physical science, and then I had to make them because ugh, I wanted them. So anyways, you have the batter, that's like the thick magma. Once that brownie, you take it out of the oven and it starts to cool, what happens around the outside, that the rim, it gets, usually? It starts hardening, hardening. It does. The inside stays nice and soft. I don't know why brownies do that. Cakes don't do that. That's yeah. so weird. It is so weird. It's because the, uh, the mixture of the chemicals, or the, not the chemicals, the natural minerals, the natural minerals with the oxygen to it, so they create a high temperature. But the top is doing that, and then the center is, like, the top, like, center is still squishy. So here's my thought, here's what I want you to put the connection. When you had it soft and gooey, and then baked it, and then took it out, that outside rim, Kind of like the crust, right? It gets hard, it gets crunchy. crunchy. That's what happened to the whole outside surface of our Earth. Like the whole thing was like this hot, gooey ball. Then the outside started to cool and get hard. Okay. Um, in a way, it could also be like if you have um, like uh, that hard Hershey syrup that turns into a shell. Like you can put it on ice cream. It's liquid and thick. And then when it, you know, like it, it gets cold from the ice cream and it hardens into like a shell. Same kind of idea, okay? And so our mantle is still very, very hot, and it is still in the cool down process four billion years later. Wait, yes. really? So it's like you're it's still hot and bubbly underneath you're us. You're killing me. I know. So like, um, it's like let's stop can there. It get us in the It can come yeah. up at us. So we'll continue with the mantle. Manana.